Blastomyces dermatitis. It's been six months since your lung transplant surgery, and it's finally time to put on your traveling boots and do all the crazy things you've wanted to do. So you and your friends plan a trip to visit the Mississippi River for an adventure. But after you come back home from what has been the best three weeks of your life, you suddenly begin to notice warts and open sores popping up everywhere on your skin. You freak out and rush to the hospital, and your diagnosis shows that you've inhaled the spores of the Blastomyces fungus, and it's just been busy making itself very comfortable in your lungs. Seems like you brought one more house guest back, but this time you're the house. This sneaky fungus lives in moist soil and decaying woods, especially around large water bodies like the Great Lakes. When the soil is disturbed, the spores become airborne and start to attack the entire body of people with weak immune systems. Before you know it, you'll be coughing up blood because the fungus has slowly started eating away your bones. It would also spread the infection to your skin and brain and cause tiny boils and warts to appear all over your body. Ignoring this fungus is like inviting it to crash on your couch. It's not going to leave on its own. The infection of this fungus can be deadly if the symptoms are neglected for long. The death rate for blastomycosis patients is up to 17% per year. So unless you're ready to become the next Airbnb host for this fungus, make sure you're always vaccinated before any trip. Ergot. Now you are the new farmer in town who had just recently planted a large field of rye, wheat, and barley for the first time. Soon enough, the time came for you to reap the fruits of your hard labor, but during the harvest you find that some of your grains have these weird purplish-black lumps growing on them that you definitely didn't plant. As a smart but inexperienced farmer, you call your neighbor who has all the experience. He tells you that those weird lumps are ergots, a deadly fungus that grows on plants like rye and wheat. Your neighbor tells you that the fungus releases extremely poisonous chemicals that can destroy the intestines and cause extreme discomfort to humans and animals. Let's say you mistakenly mix them with your good grains to cook or bake. It would cause an intense burning sensation in your mouth and throat like you're swallowing hot coals, the hallucinations would make you see terrifying visions, and the vomiting would leave you exhausted. Your muscles would cramp in agonizing pain, you'd shake uncontrollably from convulsions, and your skin would itch and burn like it's on fire. So, if you are a young, inexperienced farmer, you might want to avoid mixing any purple-looking stuff into your grain supply while harvesting, or else you might just be sentencing your whole community to a very, very painful death. Death Cap Mushroom Remember when you were just a kid and your parents were always telling you not to touch anything strange? That was good practice for avoiding death cap mushrooms as an adult. They are the ultimate look but don't touch and definitely don't eat item in nature's inventory. They are basically nature's special version of cyanide, except it's way worse than that. While ingesting cyanide is likely going to lead you to a painless death, just one cap from the death cap mushroom would cause such excruciating pain that you would literally be the one praying for the grim reaper to come get you. To top it off, the fungus has no particular smell or taste to warn you until it's too late. Eating just one cap of these mushrooms is like swallowing a ticking time bomb, and within days it will cause so much damage to your kidneys and liver that it would lead to an agonizing and horrific end to your life. The scariest part is that the toxins are so strong that your body's white blood cells and antibodies don't even stand a chance. You'd think such a deadly mushroom would be lurking somewhere in a deep, dark forest that nobody lives in and people rarely visit, but no! It grows on lawns, alongside roads, and even in parks all over Europe. Destroying Angel Mushroom It's a bright early fall morning and the perfect weather to go hiking. Everywhere is chill and calm, so you decide to put on your hiking boots and hit your favorite spots. As you walk, you pick up some nice-looking flowers, and when you spot these plain white, innocent-looking mushrooms, you stretch out your hand to pick them without knowing that they were destroying angel mushrooms a deceptive, deadly assassin. The destroying angel would first attract you with its plain, white, innocent look. But the minute you fall for its trap and touch or inhale its spores, it would be like taking a big gulp of poison, hence the nickname Destroying Angel. A very appropriate name if you consider all the havoc this mushroom would cause your system. The opening act would be a stomach pain so intense that it feels like your intestines are just busy tying up in knots. 
As your stomach hurts, you'll start to feel the intense urge to vomit and poop, eventually getting diarrhea. Now, the real misery kicks in a day or two later when the toxin has finally traveled to your liver and lungs. If it makes its way down there, the poison would just keep polluting every single organ it comes across until it can barely function. At this stage, the only option you might have is to spend the rest of your life on serious antifungal medications because without them, you might just drop dead. So the lesson is, don't pick up things you don't know that could be dangerous, especially if they look white and innocent. Teleromyces Marna Fey. Just like everything out of the tropical forest that has evolved to either kill you or seriously damage your immune system, the Teleromyces fungus would essentially get into your system through inhalation, and for the most part, it really won't cause you any problems. Well, that is, as long as you're healthy and strong. The real drama starts if you mistakenly fall sick during this period. Once inside a vulnerable host, this fungus goes from chill to a real biological party-crashing parasite very quickly. It starts multiplying like crazy, spreading its fungal tendrils throughout the body via the bloodstream. Next thing you know, you've got a nasty systemic fungal infection brewing. High fevers spike relentlessly, your weight drops off rapidly as if you're melting away, skin lesions popping up, looking like you contracted some disgusting rash. In worst cases, Teleromyces can make its way into vital organs like the lungs, bones, and even the brain if it really kicks into overdrive. At that point, you're basically dealing with an invasive fungal assault on your entire system. Out of the 17,300 people who are infected with this fungus every year, a total of 4,900 people end up six feet under. Fusarium. In the unfortunate event your food gets contaminated with Fusarium spores, the fungi would enter your body and slowly begin to eat away your lungs and liver. It would burrow deeply into every single cell and cause such an intense session of vomiting and diarrhea that you'd feel like pulling out your intestines. The situation is even worse for pregnant women because the infection would also eat at their baby's body tissue, and they would give birth to children with defects. These tiny looking molds are also very dangerous for plants too. The Fusarium wilts would infect the roots and stems of plants by blocking the plant's vascular system, cutting off its water and nutrient supply, essentially giving it the plant's version of a heart attack. Now, if the plant were to survive this first attack by some miracle, the Fusarium fungi would move on to the next phase of assault by injecting the plant with mycotoxin, which are toxic substances and would cause acute kidney and liver damage to humans. With the ability to produce toxic weapons, Fusarium can destroy valuable crops, render foods unsafe for consumption, and generally be the uninvited and unwanted dinner guest who ruins the party for farmers and food producers alike. Histoplasma capsulatum this particular fungus is like that chill uncle at family gatherings who doesn't disturb anyone until someone decides to mess with his chill quiet time. The histoplasma would always be found relaxing in the cool soil, especially in areas with lots of birds and bat droppings, minding its business and doing all its fungus things. Now the real drama starts if you mistakenly disturb its peace and quiet by kicking up its tiny fungal spores into the air. Once the fungus gets into your bloodstream through inhalation, it would quickly find the most comfortable spot inside your lungs. And, well, you'll be in for a very painful ride. The fungus would start by giving you an infection called histoplasma, which would make you feel like you've been run over by a truck, kicked repeatedly in the head, then run over two more times. You'd experience head-splitting headaches, intense, unbearable muscle and body aches, runny nose and sore throat that feels like you swallowed gravel. Now, if you have a healthy immune system, then you have nothing to worry about because the symptoms will fade away on their own after a few weeks, and you'll probably just conclude it was a bad case of flu. However, suppose your lungs are already weak and stressed. In that case, there's a very big chance that the infection will spread through your body, leading to an enlarged liver, breathing problems, and chronic lung disease, which is mostly a recipe for organ failure and possible death. Since there's no way to know when you step in its territory, the best thing to do is just to hit the gym every day and lift weights and eat fruit like your life depends on it, because it just might.
Aspergillus. If eating pizza and watching Netflix is your regular daily routine, you should probably begin to consider introducing exercises and eating healthy into your routine to boost your immune system, because this nasty fungus, Aspergillus, is lurking in every corner of your house just waiting for the moment your white blood cells are flat on the ground to strike. You see, the tiny invisible spores of this fungus are literally floating everywhere, and if, in the unfortunate event, you inhale these spores when your white blood cells are not very strong, the fungus will settle in your lungs and, as a thanks for having me offer, it'll give you cough, fever, chest pain, and difficulty breathing. If you accept its offer by not doing anything about the early symptoms, the fungus will make itself more comfortable by spreading its deadly army. These tiny infections will infiltrate every single organ in your body and become a tangled web of diseases that will cause a pus-filled sore to pop out all over your organs. The infection would now spread to your bloodstream and bones, leading to widespread organ failure. You might want to start looking at funeral homes and coffin designs when you get to this stage as you will begin to experience seizures and blood clots. Then, after a short while, develop kidney failure, liver failure, and ultimately, death. Over 2 million people are infected with Aspergillus every year, and out of this number, a staggering number of 1.8 million people follow the Grim Reaper home. And with this, I hope you've subscribed to our Discord channel so you can keep getting enough information that'll encourage you to start eating healthy. Candida auris now, this is the weird fungal cousin of the deadly coronavirus, and just like its cousin, it can be fatal when it comes in contact with cells. The fungus is mostly found in hospitals and nursing homes because these facilities house many vulnerable individuals like the elderly, ICU patients, newborn babies, and transplant recipients who are susceptible to its attack. Now, this fungus is like the guest who not only crashes your party, but refuses to leave no matter what you do. Once C. auris gets into any hospital building or healthcare facility, no amount of cleaning and scrubbing can get them to go away. So once they're in, they are in. Now, once the fungus gets into your bloodstream, it can remain dormant for a long time, but the minute you fall sick, the gate of symptoms would automatically open meaning you'll immediately start to experience fever, chills, extreme tiredness, and high blood pressure. It would essentially feel like your body has decided to wage a war on you and you are losing. The fungus can stay in your immune system for such a long time without detection, and this makes them very resistant to any kind of antifungal medication. And this makes it really, really difficult to treat anyone infected by the fungus. C. auris is very invasive and has been responsible for many deadly hospital outbreaks in more than 30 countries around the world, and even the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention had to sound the alarm about containing the spread of Candida auris before it became the next global superbug crisis. Pneumocystis urovecchi. It's been a long, hard battle fighting cancer, but finally your cancer free and the doctor can't find any more tumors. After a week of relaxing at home trying to get your strength and life back, you start to notice that you're having some trouble breathing properly. So you quickly rush back to the hospital to get checked out, but your doctor reassures you that the cancer hasn't come back. But you're diagnosed with an infection called pneumocystic pneumonia, which is caused by pneumocystis urovecchi. This fungus mostly attacks people with weak immune systems or people who have been on drugs and chemotherapy for a while. It is airborne, so you're basically just inhaling your problems. However, some antifungal medication should help to make you breathe and feel better quickly. However, it would have been an entirely different story if you had ignored the slight breathing problem. Let's say you ignore the early symptoms. Pneumocystis fungus will continue to multiply and form blood colonies in your lungs like unwanted squatters. Soon enough, those colonies will start to cause inflammation and fluid buildup, making your lungs feel like they're filling with wet cement. Each breath would become a struggle as if you were trying to breathe through a straw. Eventually, the built-up fluid would start to leak, leading to serious respiratory failure, leaving you gasping for air and desperate for relief. Trichophyton rubrum. Now, if you live in humid or tropical regions like Africa, Latin America, South Asia, or the Caribbean, then you've probably suffered from athlete's foot at least once. It's a red, itchy, peeling rash that grows between the toes and develops into painful blisters that crack the skin. 
Behind this painful disease is trichophyton rubrum, which causes other nasty infections like anichomycosis, which entirely disfigures toenails or fingernails, making them look thick, discolored, crumbly, and hideous. T. rubrum is contracted through direct skin contact, tiny cuts in the feet, and inhaling airborne spores. Let's say you have direct skin contact with a person who is carrying this fungus. It will enter your body, and the first thing on its to-do list is to find the most comfortable spot on your nails and skin and get settled. Its favorite part of relaxing is moist skin folds like your elbow or armpit fold, and it would trigger a series of classic red, circular, itchy rashes that would look like ringworms, turning your skin into a battleground. If left unchecked, the fungus would easily spread from your feet to the groin area to cause an uncomfortable ring-shaped rash known as jock itch. Although the infections caused by the fungus are not deadly, it may become such an annoyance that it affects your daily life. Coccidioides imitis. If you unfortunately inhale the spores of this fungus, as the contaminated air travels down your throat and into your lungs, the fungus will quickly make itself at home and begin to grow. Over the next few weeks, you'll start to experience valley fever, which basically makes you feel like you've caught the worst flu of your life. Every muscle aches, your head pounds with pain, and you'd feel so tired that even simple tasks would feel impossible to do. You're going to start burning up with fever, coughing hard, and shivering violently too. It's like your body fighting a tough battle against an invisible enemy and you're losing slowly. However, if your immune system is at 100%, then your antibodies will get into action and flush out the fungus from your system like a security guard throwing out a rude customer. But let's say your immune system is on a downhill. Then the flu-like symptoms are just the opening act. As the day goes by, the fungus will begin to set up shop in your bones, skin, brain, and other parts of your body to cause severe infection that makes the valley fever look like child's play. We're talking bone infection, pneumonia, joint pain, meningitis, lung damage, and skin lesions hitting you all at once. At this stage, you will most likely die or be on lifelong antifungal treatment.